Hello, everybody, and welcome to Crochet, a Canadian crochet podcast. I am your hostess, Claudia. Thank you so much for joining me today. I herald from the base of the Rocky Mountains in southern Alberta, Canada, and I love to crochet. Let's get started. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, it is a very cold, miserable, snowing, just yucky kind of place to be today. So that's that's what we've got going on um so i'm going to hop in and get started um if you like these kind of episodes make sure you give this a thumbs up and you can subscribe down below and make sure you hit the bell to get the notifications of when i upload so what am i going to start with um i have my show notes on my side here so i will hopefully be able to keep somewhat on track um, i've tried recording this before and it was just like an ice it was just like a squirrel skittering on ice. I just could not keep my thoughts together. So I thought best to go back to show notes and write some of them up so then I can at least keep this moving in a proper fashion. So I will start with uh, what I'm working on. That sounds, that's as good as anything. Okay, I have my basket here beside me. I just started these last night. Yes, so this is one day's worth of work. So I decided that I would like to have some long, like legging things type things um, for wintertime under my dresses because I do have tights that I don't like how they feel like they're itchy and sometimes I feel like I have so many layers like around my bottom and stuff and it just is too much so I thought oh well I'll make these and then it will just like come midway up thigh and then that should be fine so I am making these these are they're so pretty this yarn is just it's so gorgeous this is the unique worsted weight wool that i purchased from unwind wool in oak Tokes, and it is working up nicely so i'm using a four millimeter hook to accomplish this and this is all worked in the spiral round um, using front post double crochet and then i have kept all of my increases right here up the one side so they all you can see them all going like this and then yeah, it just gets bigger as it goes up my leg. So this is like, it's just very midway to my, like just up my shin. Um, I also put a foot part to help keep them held down on my foot. So this is just a small, this will go around my foot and then this goes up the leg here like this. So yeah, pretty basic, but I mean, it's fun. It's nice and warm. I keep trying it on to make sure that it's fitting my leg and it does, so that is good. So that is not very exciting, but I have one of these uh, that I'm working on and I hope to get it to the, Oh, that much bigger so I think I think that I'll have that ready next week probably I don't know we'll see how fast this goes I'm working I feel like I'm working on so many things right now um, okay so that's one thing the next thing that I am working on is I have started making ooh, a mess down there um, I started making myself a dress and I used a pattern that I found on YouTube, how to work a circle no a circle yoke neck, sorry. Um, and so I got this and I did some short row shaping at the back so the back is taller than the front, but still I, I try it on and it comes to like about here, which that's pretty much what I want. This color, I'm not 100% sure if I like it or not. Um, like I do, I do, I do while I'm working on it. I just, I'm not sure how it's going to look with my face. Um, the only thing that I think I could do if it doesn't, if I look at it and I'm like, mm, I don't really love it, is I do have some brown and gold yarn that um, I could pick one of those two. And I know for sure those do go work with my coloring uh, that I could put like a little sort of like extra faux collar on there. So it looks like it's got layers. Like I'm wearing another like undershirt underneath it, but not actually have it and put it on that. And then also the cuffs on the ends of the sleeves when it's done and the bottom, just so it all like, it doesn't look like I've tacked something on there. And then uh, when this is finished, I want to put a little out, outer pocket on it. So I just have some place to like tuck my keys in that. And it'll probably, it'll actually probably go roughly in this area here. Cause this is just, just under this spot. So if I like to have things that I can tuck a little bit higher, um, cause I don't often put my hands in my pockets to use as pockets. I like pockets to be used as things to hold things. So toddlers and I, we got it going on as far as that's concerned. Uh, what am I doing? This, I'm just winging this other than figuring out how much to increase on the yoke. I didn't use a pattern. Um, cause I've never, I have done circle yolks before, but usually I'm just like, I keep kind of like trying them on and see how it goes. And I was like, well, maybe I should look up how to actually do it. So I did. And it turns out I wasn't all that far off of what I was doing. 
Um, the stitch that I am using for this is uh, alternating half double crochet and single crochet, and it is worked in the spiral, so there's no seam at the back. Um, but I have kept a stitch marker, that's with this big gray one here, um, all the way down, I keep moving it, because at the back that's where you switch between the stitch types. So I, I'm going to have to look at the inside and the outside once this is finished, because I think I'm just too close to it to be able to decide. But usually with half double crochet, one side does look different than the other. And there's usually one side that I like better than the other. But because I've been working on this side, I think I just because I've been looking at it for so long, this is the side that I like. But then I look on the inside and I'm like, well, it's got all that like that stripiness that I like. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, yes. So I also plan to I plan to get this down to just above my knees. And then I'm going to add sleeves to this. So this will very much be a decidedly winter outfit and I will be putting a liner on the inside as well because you can see through this and I don't want people to be able to see my undergarments or my skin that is not arm because well also it's not nice because when the wind is blowing it just like cuts right through you and that's not very warm either so there is that and then oh this one's one of my favorites I've been stopping and starting it um, okay, so this is the perfect t-shirt, or perfect crochet t-shirt, but I started making this t-shirt, and that's what it's actually called, and I have a stitch marker here to denote that this is the outside of this, of the garment, not the inside. Um, so this, again, it had, it, the yoke was worked up really, really interestingly. This doesn't look very even now that I'm looking at this on camera, but it, it is even because I counted and everything's fine. Um, anywho. The yoke was worked up very interestingly on this. So you sort of make one piece um, by itself-ish and then you add to it and you're supposed to go around and round and round. I ended up not doing that. So I made my, my yoke and then you stop, oh gosh, where was it? Right around here? Was it here? Yeah, that makes sense, right here. And then um, in the pattern it says just to keep going in a spiral around. But instead, I cut mine off and, and uh, wove my ends in, and then I started back at the back. So it does have a bit, the seam isn't actually, it's not that bad when you're far away from it. I mean, you can see it, but then also it's easy for me to tell which is the front, which is back. Because, um, yeah, sometimes I don't really pay attention. But nobody's really going to notice, I think, the back once it's on. So if this fits really, really nicely, um, I am using, what is this yarn called? This will be in my yarn purchase as well. Okay, so this is the... Uh, Estelle Yarns Highland Alpaca. It is in the color denim. It's so pretty. It's a mix of alpaca and wool. I think I'll t we'll get into the details of the wool a little bit later, but that's this. Um, it's really, really soft. It works up really nice. It has even the few bits that I've had to frog has frogged nicely as well. Um, Cause usually with these, I'm not sure if you can entirely, yeah, see it's got a little bit of fuzz on top. And uh, usually when you have yarns like that, those yarns that stick out, they like to be friends because they're lonely. So they get stuck together once they find a friend in your crocheting or knitting project. So when you go to frog it, they are desperate to stay together. This one, not so much. Um, I've also heard of people having sensitivities to alpaca because they're, they have an outer coat and an undercoat is my understanding. And depending on like how it's carded and, and worked up, um, that makes a difference like what um, like what variation you get. I think like less expensive yarn is typically more outer coat. Again, I could be 100% wrong. I have done very little research into alpaca yarn. Um, this is just, I'm just guessing really. I'm not guessing. I've, I've watched a couple of videos, but I am not well versed in it. So that is, that's just my understanding, but I, I am open to criticism and that you telling me the right thing. So please feel free to do that, that, you know, you have, actually you're wrong. It, it's this. I'm happy to learn. Um, what was it? Oh, that it was itchy. So, but I don't find this yarn that itchy, like at all, but I don't really have sensitive skin. So, uh, yeah, I'm about ooh, half done. Oh, there's a stick in here. That looks like it's just from the house. Um, yeah, so I'm about half done. I have a little bit more to go to get it down to the point that I want. I have two more skeins of this that are still like that, like this one and another one. And I have worked one and this Whoops, one and this one into this so far. And where did I put? I try to make sure my knots are always on the inside. Maybe I did a good job and didn't make a knot. That doesn't seem like, oh, here. Right here is where I started. Can you see? Yeah, right there. That's where I added the second ball. So I've only been in the second ball for, oh gosh, probably like, what is that, two? 
maybe three centimeters. Um, oh, right. I was going to talk about the pattern. I sorry, I got sidetracked. So I am using for this, I'm using a four and a half millimeter hook, even though I originally started with the hook that was requested for this. So this is the correct yarn weight um, that was requested by the, um, the pattern. And I went to the yarn store and I even asked, I was like, this is a substitute. So they originally asked for the Kobu yarn, but I have used that in the past and I just, I didn't, I didn't really like it and I felt for something that I was testing out that I knew I was going to want to wear, I would want to have something that was beautiful and I liked the feeling and the color and I like how it works up and everything. So I went into the yarn store and I was talking to the lady and I was like, you know, like, this is what I'm looking for. I need this weight. Um, are you familiar with the Kobu? And she said, yes, luckily. So she was like, you know, like this one is good. And then they had another cotton one that I would love to try. Not, I'm not sure for a garment. It was really pretty colors. Um, but yeah, I was also looking for stitch definition, which this, this has, um, not a ton, but the other one would have had like very, very definite stitch mark or stitch definition. Um, anyway, so I did that and took this home, read the label of what size it would want to take and it matched up pretty good with it. And I did some crocheting and it looked fine. And then I started in with the project after I did, I did a little swatch. I don't really usually do swatches, but I did a little one and it seemed to measure up. So I was getting going in this with the size extra small because typically that's what I wear is an extra small and I find that that usually fits me best and with the measurements provided in the pattern that would also have worked for me. So either I just went gung-ho and started reefing on the stitches when I got going on this but I ended up having to size up uh, to the size small part way through which is fine because it is the same pattern for the vast majority of it. It's just like the number of rows in like in this part of the yoke to get to the armhole is different um, from the extra small to the small. And then I believe there's more rows of stitches. I have to double check, but um, just things like that. So I found this to size quite a bit smaller, even with testing on a swatch first. And I don't have the swatch because I just used it. Um, yeah, so that's one thing is if, if you... Are, unless you're a very loose crocheter, I think perhaps then it would stay better to size. But I personally had trouble, even though my swatch told me I was doing the right thing. Um, and a linen stitch typically works up to be tighter, at least for me anyway, because anytime I make a chain, it's I, I don't chain and like pull it tight or anything like that, but my chains are always tighter than my regular stitches. So anytime I have a combination of any stitch and a chain, it's always going to be a little bit like squishier than usual, um, which also that would be important why if you're making a garment for yourself or somebody else is to swatch it and to check all of that stuff. But yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I probably like, it's probably like I just got going um, once I once I got started in this and wasn't really concentrating as hard anymore. And that's why it ended up getting a bit tighter than it was intended. But all that being said, changing to the different hook size remedied it perfectly. So um, if you're having trouble with that one, that is something that I would recommend for this. But other than that, like the pattern is really easy to read. There's tons of pictures. You can get a paid version. I just am using the free version. Um, that was listed on Ravelry and I'll have the information in the description box below. But yes, if you're looking for a nice top, um, I would definitely, even though I'm not finished it yet, I would definitely recommend it because I, I love how it's going and I love the shape of the neck and everything like that. Like this, it's great. So I give this, pa I rate this pattern pretty high already. So there you go. I have a little bit of a special bit here of what I'm working on. Um, so I kind of got a little bit upset because my daughter... At her school they were having a crochet club and she wanted to go to it um, but her teacher told her that she couldn't because her mom could just teach her to crochet and I was like well like that's not very nice because I am not really the best teacher um, I get I tend to get a bit frustrated and I, I don't yell at people like I just want to put that out there but I, I feel myself being impatient and um, you know, I forget how hard I try or how hard it was for me when I first started and I didn't have anybody there to be like, oh, actually, if you try this, I like learned just all by myself. So it's been so long that I kind of forget. Um, but I typically shy away from teaching other people things um, because I feel that I'm just not a, that good of a teacher. Like there are people who are really good at teaching. I'm just not one of those people. I'm a, more of a demonstrator. So all of that being said, my daughter then came home. I've taught her a little bit how to crochet and to very basically stockinette stitch, 
uh, knit when she was, oh gosh, probably four or five. So she was really little. And then she, you know, kind of plays around every once in a while with yarn. But then she's like, well, I want to make something. And I said, okay, that sounds great. What do you want to make? And she's like, well, I'll make, I'll just make a string. And I'm like, well, honey, like, you know, we, we can add some rows and then you can have like something. So she decided she wants to make a bow tie for the puppy's collar, which I'm actually surprised and I should knock on wood, but they are being quiet. They've been quiet this whole episode so far. So this is her crocheting. She started out with her chain and yes, it's, it's not quite the right shape. So I'll be helping her with that. It's, and it's not even, I'm looking at it and I don't even think that it's that her stitches, like she's got like too many stitches. There's a couple places she has two stitches in one stitch. Um, but it's mostly just because she crocheted so much tighter than this, but this is, so she started her little rectangle that there's also a funny thing that happened here. So I'm going to frog that for her and teach her how to fix that. Um, but yeah, so she's going to make a, a rectangle and then we'll make another little baby rectangle and squish this in the center and then it will be like that and then we'll attach it to the dog's collar. So I just wanted to show that that's what she is working on. And this is Bernat Premium in the color Cantaloupe, which will be making an appearance later on. So watch out for that. But yes, yeah, so I'm very proud that she wanted to do this. Um, so I, she did her own chain and then I helped her remember how to do the single crochet into the next one and then I went and had a bath or something oh I had a shower and then I came down and she had finished all of this which I was like oh my gosh like she did so well I'm so proud of her but yeah it's just like it's tension stuff right like she's she's 10 now so it's gonna take her a while to get all of that sorted out but I'm like I'm just so stoked that she did this and for this, she is using a five millimeter hook. This is an unbranded hook that I don't know what it is, but I feel like it marries the best of the baits and best of the um, boy hooks. Like it's, I just, I love this hook so much. I only have one. But yeah, so she's using this for that right now. That's what she's working on. I have five here. Where did this come from? Oh, mommy. Oh, well, put it away. I'll find, I'll find its, its mate somewhere. Okay, those are the things that I'm working on right now. I have three finished items, which I know it's been some time since we last discussed anything. I should have way more finished items, but to be honest, I frogged so many things that I had been working on because I knew that I have had no intention of finishing them. It's been a very odd season for me this past several weeks. Um, I'd start things and frog them and start and frog and start and frog. And then I was just like, you know what? Like, I'm not going to do this anymore. I... So I frogged a ton of things and I just put the yarn away and I didn't crochet for a little while. Or if I did, it was just like very, very, very mindless, like, well, you'll see mindless things that I was just like, I just need to put like one foot in front of the other and just do it and get it done. And then I will get my crojo back. And luckily I did. It has very much come back this week. Um, so I've been happy to work on things and not frogging things and coming with, up with ideas that I would love to do. And part of that I'm going to need you guys for, please. So I put a call out, which received very, very little response, um, about getting pattern testers because I have a pattern that I would like to release, but I would love people to test it first before we do that. And also give me any feedback that they may have about it. So this is the thing that I finished, which you're going to say it's not finished, but just hear me out. Um, so I made this cowl and I think it's beautiful. It, this is the, it's, I call it the cumulus cowl because it's cumulus is the clouds that are like really puffy and that's the stitch is very puffy and fun and it's the same inside and outside so you're saying oh it's not a cowl because it's not finished I had a brilliant idea which I never finished I shouldn't say I never finished I tried and I couldn't figure out quite how to do that I wanted to put another stitched lining inside here and I got this chenille like the light chenille blanket yarn from Michael's like it's like that velvety kind of stuff but it's thinner it's about it's you see it's about like that big about the mm, a pen oh it's like roughly this big so this is a Crayola super tip marker so it's about this size instead of like about double that anyway um and I was trying to figure out how to put the an inside into this and it just was not going well and then I was like you know what like this is probably going to be just fine and I even wore it outside just holding it and it is fine it's a little bit airy so I think if you wanted to put a liner in here I would recommend a um oh help me mommy a fabric liner inside um just to get this if, if you're that worried about it but I mean it's still like it's still good so I outside of me needing to put 
or stitch this edge together. It is, it is technically done. Um, so I, I need, I need some pattern testers. If you would like to be a pattern tester, please leave a comment in the comment box below and start with the words pattern tester. That's, and then I will contact you in some way, you know, through Facebook or not Facebook, sorry, through YouTube, something like that, or I'll comment back to you and we will hopefully get something sorted out, but that's, that's what I would like. If you don't want to necessarily be a pattern tester for this, but you would like to be a pattern tester for other things that I have coming up, I have an email list set up and maybe this, like I need to explain some of this. So the email list is not to have, you're not subscribed to an email newsletter. You're not going to be getting emails about anything that's for sale. I'm not going to be sending updates through there. It would be only, only if you would like to be a pattern tester, it would be hi, you know, and I have a few or not requirements. I have a few things that you can check off. So for example, um, it'll ask like, what do you like to crochet? What sizes are you? And you know, um, what would you say your experience is? So that when I have stuff that I am putting out that comes up and you meet those requirements, I would send an email out. Yes. Like to lots of people, but just asking who would like to be, um, a pattern tester for this particular pattern and then people would respond back and that's all it is. it is not an email newsletter i just i want to make that very clear and i'm not collecting your emails to put into a newsletter i'm not collecting them to sell them nothing like that your information is perfectly safe once you've subscribed subscribed to the pattern testing call out that i am putting together all that information will be in the, in the information box below but yes, so I would like pattern testers for the cumulus cowl, please. And if you have any other feedback after you have finished crocheting it, I am very glad to hear it. So that is something that I have been working on. I would like to release this pattern. Also, it did not take me very long at all. I didn't time the number of hours, but because this yarn is thicker, it's uh, an Aran weight yarn size. It's four or five. I can't remember now. Look on the label. I want to say it's four. Yeah, it is. Um, it works up really, really quickly and it's, it's good to go. And I will also have a description of how to create this stitch, but yes, it's the same forwards or like inside and outside. So you can, um, stitch the ends together anyway, and you can wear it either way. So that's that. That is one thing. And I think this is so pretty. This is not my color at all, but I just thought this was nice. So there's this. The next thing that I have finished and it's like falling apart, which is embarrassing to show you guys this, but Hey, this is real life. Um, I made myself a pair of little slip on slippers. Um, they are you they're they're toe toe up technically so you start at the toe make the shape for the toe box and then you go to here this is worked in the round up until about this point and then I just did back and forth to create the depth of the heel here and like and then I don't really like the way that the heel turned out because it's like it's a little bit short like I wish it was up like it went up this way instead um but with the way that I was doing it I'm not sure how I would do that um but yeah so I made I made these this is not a pattern I just sort of used my sock knowledge and did this I made these oh yeah so this one I didn't weave the end in quite right in this one which I knew that going in but I threw them in the wash anyway like a ding dong and then yeah same thing with this like it's just a thread sticking out um, that needs to be trimmed off. Um, but I just sort of, I did a rough idea. Like I knew how many stitches I had across the toe and how long, and I measured them, you know, my very precise measuring way of do they line up. And these actually, I thought these were going to be sisters. They are like, they are sisters. Like they're twins, but they're like fraternal twins. So, like they're very, very close to being the same. I used two strands of it's, you know, a perfect pair from Michael's in born to run to make these. I do have a little bit left over from that. Um, but yeah, I, I love these, like they're so cozy and warm and yeah, so it's this, this stitch is the same stitch that I am using on. And of course it's at the bottom of my basket now, uh, of this. So you can see like these are quite similar, but I've been walking, like I've been walking on these quite a bit. Oh, they're a little bit, they're a little bit grubby. Um, yeah, I've been walking on them quite a bit and I can, I can definitely see where my foot is. And I am curious if I could, with this, I, I'm curious if I could make like a thicker portion on the, the back of the heel and the, the, for my feet anyway, on the ball, because I have a regular arch. I don't know. I have an arch on my foot. So I typically will wear, if this is my foot, I wear at the heel and across the balls of my feet. So I wonder if there's a way that I could even thicker make these at that point. So I have to look it up. I don't know. Or if you have any suggestions, let me know. That is that. And then finally, this is one thing that I have 
finished that I was working on last time, but it's been done for quite a while. So I finally finished my great big um, mustard colored cowl that, oh gosh, I've been wearing it and washing it and the dogs are shedding and which, cause they always are. Um, so yes, I really, really like this. One thing I wanted to ask all of you though is, um, would you put fringe on this or not? So I, I don't want to put tassels on it because um, I'm a, ta a tassel dragger. <laughs> That's just how I am. Um, but I was wondering if you thought if I should put tassels or not tassels, sorry, fringe on here. I am totally, totally on the fence. Like it's very 50-50 for me. So the tassel edge would not be along. This is the top here and this part goes by your neck and shoulders and things and gets wrapped around. And then at this these corners here, the other one on the other side, this is the side that would have the fringe on. So let me know. You can vote in the comment box below. Tassel, not tassels. Oh my gosh. Now I said it too many times and now that's all I can think of. Fringe or no fringe. I will also be asking over on Instagram so you could vote there as well. If you want to put two votes in, it doesn't really matter. And I have enough yarn of this left over that I will be able to do that. And this yarn is the, oh, this is Craft Smart Yarn from Michael's and it is called Curry. How many balls did this take? I think this took five. This took more than I thought it was going to, but it's very big. It's just acrylic worsted weight. No, not worsted weight. It's Aran weight yarn. So it's heavy. It's good for winter time. It's cozy. And I just, I love it. And I love the color. So yes, please let me know. What would you do with this fringe or no fringe? Yarn purchases that I have recently made, so I'm keeping them here right now. So one that I made that's almost used up is the Burnett Premium in Cantaloupe, that pink one. And then I also have these ones. So this is the other ball from this, the dress that I was showing you guys. This is Burnett Premium in, this is called Moss. This absolute perfect name for this color. I absolutely love it. It's so, it's so pretty. I just, yeah, like it's the color of Moss and it makes me really happy to see it. Um, size four, five millimeter hook. Um, wash dry, all that good stuff. Very basic yarn. This is great stuff. This now is cheaper than the Craft Smart yarn at Michaels. And you can buy, I can buy this at Walmart. They don't carry the premium at our Michaels. They only carry the super value, which is still more money than this. And it doesn't feel as nice. And there's a little bit less yarn in there. So you get in this ball skein. Do, 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 do. Hold on, where is it? You get 329 meters and it's 198 grams. So it's pretty, like it's pretty good. And I pay $4.49 for these. Um, the other, I got more than just this ball. That, this, this one is the only one that's left of this color. I have two more of this. This color is called Sage Mist. And, oh, it looks really gray on camera. It's a very, it is, it's a gray green. It's really pretty as well. So I saw this color and this color and this color in a bin at Walmart all just laying together and I thought they were so beautiful together so I bought them because I have no self-control um yeah I know that yarn actually was not that expensive so this is called golden wheat same thing burnett same weight this one feels ever so slightly fluffier and it's got quite a halo on it so I don't know if someone was playing with this before I got it but yeah it's not it's not all that different from this color yeah like this is a little bit more orange than this one but still, same, same yogurt. And then one of my favorite purchases, I purchased this for my birthday because I turned 38 years old on October 29th. So I took myself to the yarn store and I bought some yarn and here we go. Uh, so I purchased this from the Unwind Wool store in Okotoks and this is called, it's Estelle Yarns, which I have used Estelle Yarns in the past and I, I had a love-hate and then love, definitely more love relationship for the other project that I used with the still yarns, but this is completely different makeup from the other one. Um, so this is Highland Alpaca DK made with mule sling free, mule sling free wool. Bleh. Um, it is, it wasn't super expensive. I was really surprised. Okay. So it's 60% super fine alpaca and that's perhaps why it is not itchy. Uh, and 40% mule sling free Highland wool. So that is nice. The color lot is number 15 denim. It's hand wash, lay flat to dry, made in Peru. All of that makes sense. Um, yeah, all of my skeins are the same dye lot. I made sure. Um, and they had, what else? They had a yellow that I was going to grab because it was like, it was sort of, this is a little bit speckly. If you can see, like, I think denim is the perfect name for this because it does. It looks like it's made of jeans. They had a color that was like 
this color but speckly like this and made of this stuff and I almost bought that but I stopped myself because I'm like you know what you buy that color all the time you don't have a lot of blue dark blue looks fine with you so just go with that and I'm glad that I did they also had this absolutely stunning like mulberry color um, that I would definitely like to get as well yeah so there is they had a plain white a light gray a dark gray the mustard color this blue oh there's more than that there was a like a like a poppy red with like darker bits in it that was really pretty I'm not really a red wearer so I didn't I didn't grab it um what else I don't know I feel like there was eight colors so I'm missing a bunch now white maybe or did I say I can't remember anyway but if you can find this wool I would highly recommend that you get it it is it works up really really nicely I can't verify right now if it washes very well obviously you have to hand wash it otherwise it's going to shrink up really badly um but that's okay uh because it tells you on the label and there's no weird things on it um and it says it recommends a four millimeter hook um but I'm using a 4.25 with this just because I'm doing a linen stitch and that's tight but yeah I really I really really like this it's very very pretty and I feel like it was reasonably priced for what it is oh you guys probably want to know how much is in here 250 meters and it's 100 grams so I feel like that's that's pretty good it's pretty good. it's a quarter of a kilometer so, so as I told you at the top of the hour that uh, it's been snowing here it's really really cold a few days ago Alberta was one of the coldest places on earth I just like can that sink in like on earth like, colder than Vostok um, very cold very cold here so I did not I do not enjoy <laughs> Uh, it's not my favorite um so we got an absolute immense amount of snow i want to say it's roughly 15 centimeters of snow that we got in a couple of days luckily well it started out as wet snow which we call that heart attack snow because it's really heavy and it's really hard to move around and it sticks to your shovel and it just it, it's a pain um so oh, a tip is if you have spray like pam or um oil or something for a frying pan uh put that on your shovel and then the snow will just slide right off um but after that it was powdery but the ground was warm still like the earth is still warm so it melted and then it froze so it was oh my gosh just an bomb show to try to get around anywhere and I don't I don't love I don't love that um so yeah I don't like driving the first couple of days that it snows like that because the ground is like that and it's very very slick like it takes a few days for it to sort of like get a little bit bumpy so you can get some traction on it and um, my vehicle is all-wheel drive so like it's okay but it's always like we always say it's complaining that you're out of control I need a sip of tea today mm. it's always complaining that um, you're out of control because it has the what is it the all it's got it's got automatic all-wheel drive I drive a Subaru um, a traction control that's what it's called we leave the traction control on because when you put the traction control on there's like a computer in there and when it senses that you're like starting to sort of slip it engages the four-wheel drive differently at different points so um but it, it doesn't necessarily do it like wow the little button is lit up on the dashboard that says you're out of control like it's really it's really funny but I'm like thanks like I can, I'm driving I can tell I'm out of control <laughs> no big deal um but yeah that so that's that's funny to me anyway I feel like when it's weather like this you have to find stuff that is funny or entertaining for you otherwise you just would like crawl up in the back seat and just wait for winter to be over which I would love I would love if we could just hibernate but you know humans are not hibernators unfortunately so yes that's a big thing and then both of the dogs have been molting like crazy so the big black dog his name is Sterling if I haven't introduced him before he is Husky Rottweiler and Pitbull cross so he has the double coat and the curly tail of the husky and the head of the Rottweiler and the Pitbull, I guess, because he's got like that blocky head. I, he's he's just a mess, but we love him. Anyway, he has the double coat. So twice a year he molts. So right now he'll just be walking and big clumps of hair just fall off of him. So it is the time of year that we definitely have to start brushing him. He started molting, I'd say about two weeks ago. And that's how I knew like winter was coming is you really have to watch their coats because the animals even though they're indoor animals they just seem to know when things are happening so I watch I watch their signs I watch the, the other animals outside in the garden and things like that um I wasn't expecting this much snow I was expecting the cold but not this much snow so 
who does? But still, watch your pets. They will, they'll let you know what's happening. We have to brush him a lot, and people always joke that I should save his hair and then knit it, and I'm just like, I don't know if I'd be able to do that because I know who the hair is coming from, and I don't, I don't want to brush or card dog hair, and I don't even have the tools to do it anyways, so... I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I'm also wearing some, this is new. I keep touching them because I feel like they're ever so slightly coming out of my ears. Um, I got headphones that are these little wireless Bluetooth guys. Um, I do have the big set right here, but this is better for listening to music and things. Um, to try to drown out some of the background noise, I saw this recommended by somebody else on a different channel, and then I was just curious to see if it would work. So I'm testing it out. If the sound quality is really, really terrible, I'm really sorry. I don't have time to re-record this for you, unfortunately. Um, I would love to, but I don't. And get all of that sorted out. So hopefully this is making a difference. They have been very quiet today, so this isn't even a good day to test it out. But hope that's, that is what this is about. So that is that. Okay, anything else interesting going on? Nothing interesting is going on. Um, so the reason that I took the hiatus from the channel for a few weeks is that um, my husband was employed, then he lost his job, then he's found a new job, but that was just very stressful and trying to get that all sorted out and get the kids sorted out and like making sure things were all right. And I was just like, I need to be able to focus like all my attention on like getting ourselves back on track and I don't want to have to worry about other stuff. So I didn't, I just took it easy focused on that. That is my priority. It's my family and my husband and all of that. So mm, I feel a little bit froggy today. Um, that's it really. That's, I know that's not very exciting and that doesn't really seem like a good reason to be away, but I, after I was in the short term mental health unit at the hospital, I really, the doctor really like drove the whole point home is that if I am feeling that stressed, whether I quote unquote deserve to be that stressed, if I'm feeling like that and I'm experiencing that, I need to make sure that I am taking care of myself and those around me so that I can still function and not drop down to such a level that it's like that scary place again. Cause I understand like life is like this constantly, but I don't want to be down here anymore. If I could even be like halfway down and it stays a little bit longer than being all the way down and bouncing back up. I find that is much more productive and I feel like way less exhausted when I like come back, even from like a long midway low lull in life than from going like way down and coming back up. The bouncing around like this, like while I'm like very intense and things like that, it in the, at the time it feels like it can feel good. Um, it's very, very tiring. I know for those around me and also for me, like, 2020 hindsight um, when I'm looking at that stuff. So yeah, that I, I'm, I'm not sure where we're going to go with that, but that's, that is something that I learned. So I just made sure that I took anything optional that I didn't absolutely have to do. And I moved it and rearranged things and things like that. Um, yeah. One last thing is I think I am coming up to the birthday of this podcast. It has been almost a year. I'm going to have to actually look at the actual date to see when I first podcasted because that will be so fun. All right. Oh man, it's been a year, a year, not 52 episodes, but a year. Oh, the time flies. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Thank you for staying for all of this and everything. I am so grateful for each and every one of you. You are all so special to me. And I'm so grateful that we are in each other's lives. So remember, if you like these episodes, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so that you know the next time that I upload. I will see you next time. Let me know what you're working on and blessings to everybody. Bye.